The story revolves around Seth, a socially awkward man who lives alone. In the first scene, we see him waking up in bed and getting ready for work. Seth is a severely introverted man who works at an animal control center. His job is to take care of the animals that are kept in the center. Apart from being a socially distant person, Seth loves his work and he is very attached to his animal buddies. One day while returning home, Seth recognizes a familiar face, former Westbrook High classmate Holly Garling riding the same metro bus. He had a major crush on her back then. He approaches her with her name. However, Holly doesn't recognize him, so he tells her that they used to be classmates. The girl has a diary with her, so when Seth asks what she's doing, she tells him that she keeps a record of her everyday life. Just then, the bus stops in an interval and Holly gets off to leave. Later, when he arrives home, Seth begins researching Holly on social media. He finds her profile and sees that her relationship status is single. The following day at work, Seth seeks advice from security guard Nate, who tells him to be confident and approach her. A nurse interrupts their conversation, telling Seth to bring over a German shepherd to the doctor. It is revealed that the dog is getting too old and sickly, so the doctor has decided to euthanize it to cut the expenses. Seth protests against it, so the doctor tells him to take the dog home and take care of it. However, since Seth cannot take care of the dog, he reluctantly accepts the doctor's decision. In the next scene, the doctor begins the euthanization process. He injects the poor animal with a lethal substance, and soon it stops breathing. Seth feels guilty, but he's unable to do anything. Later, he carries the dog's body and burns it. He then clears its name from the cage. While he's doing so, Seth notices a mysterious back room and goes inside out of curiosity. The scene abruptly cuts to Seth at home as he extensively researches Holly's online profiles. He starts to jot down her likes and dislikes and memorizes them to try and impress her. With the goal of getting her to go out with him, Seth stages an encounter with Holly at the restaurant where she's a waitress. Holly looks very beautiful and he once again approaches her. However, Holly doesn't recognize him, so Seth reminds her that they met on the bus the other day and they used to be classmates. Seth then invites her to her favorite singer's concert, but Holly grows uncomfortable and dismisses him. She is weirded out by the fact that he knows too much about her. Later, when she's returning home, Holly senses that someone is following her. It is, of course, Seth. When she arrives there, she tells her friend Claire that someone was following her. However, Claire thinks her friend is only bluffing. A while after, Holly gets a phone call from her drunken ex-boyfriend Eric, who tells her that he misses her. Holly receives a bouquet at work the next day, and assuming they're from Eric, she goes to the bar where he works. But to her surprise, he tells her that it is not from him. Confused, Holly goes out to smoke, and this is when she's approached by Seth, who has been following her. He confronts her, revealing that he was the one who sent the flowers. Holly thinks he's a psychopath and asks him to leave her alone. Seth refuses to accept her rejection, and this leads to a physical confrontation. Fortunately, Eric arrives in the nick of time and throws Seth out of the bar. But the obsessed man is able to recover Holly's dropped writing journal following the altercation. He then spends the next several days reading the journal. One day at work, Seth goes back to the trap door leading to a room that he had discovered a couple of days ago. The room is in an abandoned wing of the animal shelter, where he sets about constructing a steel cage. He brings out the equipment and takes help from the internet to build the cage. The loner psychopath sure has something very wicked planned in his mind. Next, he steals some sedatives from the medical room. When he returns home, he injects himself with one to try and see whether it works on humans. Soon after, he falls unconscious on the bed. The following day, when he's back to normal health, Seth follows Holly home and breaks into her room. He uses the same sedative to subdue her. He then kidnaps her and puts her in a box. Next, the psychopath brings over the box to the animal center. He is noticed by security guard Nate, who asks him what's inside the box. But Seth manages to divert the guard's attention to something else as he drags the box containing Holly to the mysterious trap door. He then imprisons her in the cage, which he had been building in that secret room. A while later, Holly finally snaps out of the sedatives, 
and finds herself locked inside an animal cage. She is freaked out and screams for help. She tries to escape, but only ends up breaking her nails. Since the room is in the basement and animals are continuously barking in the center, nobody can hear her. Soon after, Seth arrives there and gives her a small pot to use for the toilet. Holly is shocked to see him and begs him to let her out. Seth tells her that he's only doing this for her good and leaves her alone there. Holly spends the whole day alone. The next day, Seth checks on her and gives her some food and water. He then once again leaves her alone, despite her protests. Holly adjusts to her period of captivity by talking to herself in the form of her imaginary former roommate, Claire. Later, when she uses the toiletry pot, a rat runs over to her side. Initially, she freaks out, but then she grabs the animal and kills it with her bare hand. The next time Seth visits her, Holly asks him if he will kill her. The psychopath tells her that he won't, and he continues to say that he's only imprisoning her for her betterment. Seth informs Holly that he fell in love with her the first time he saw her, and now that he finally has her, he will not let her go. When the psychopath leaves the basement, he comes across Nate, who asks him what he's doing in the basement. Seth manages to lie this time as well, telling his coworker that he was there to check on some maintenance issues. Through reading Holly's journal, Seth learns that Eric had slept with Claire. Holly angrily confronted her about it during a car ride. In a fit of rage, she continued accelerating the car until they were hit by a truck. Although injured, Claire survived, but Holly fatally stabbed her with a glass shard. Claire's death was attributed to the crash. After this incident, though, Holly had been hallucinating her and talking with her. Since then, Holly had committed a series of gruesome murders and written about them in her journal. This is why Seth has found a purpose in life by preventing Holly from hurting anyone else. The next day, he eventually confronts Holly about the murders. In response, she tells him that these are only fictional stories that aren't true. However, Seth reveals that he went to the police station to check how Claire died. He found out that it was the same way Holly had mentioned in her journal. Additionally, he reveals that he had been following her for some time and had discovered how she became a serial killer after getting her first taste of blood with Claire. It is also revealed that Holly had killed one guy by choking him and another by burning him. Seth tells Holly that she is a psychopath serial killer and this is the reason why he had kidnapped and locked her in the cage. After saying this, Seth leaves her alone again. Over the next several days, they engage in psychological mind games against each other as Holly begins to slip details to draw Seth in. He maintains that Holly committed the other murders out of guilt for not being caught over Claire, but Holly counters that she kills simply for pleasure. Holly even acts differently to try and garner his pity, but Seth knows her well from her writings, so he tells her to cut the act. She then starts banging her head in the steel cage and tells him that if she dies there, Seth will be caught and will never be able to get out of this mess. Seth is intimidated by Holly's behavior, so he leaves her alone again. He doesn't visit her for the next few days. When he finally returns, Holly asks him for something to eat. But Seth tells her that he's torturing her by not giving her any food because of how she acted a few days ago. However, Seth eventually decides to get her food after she manages to manipulate him in a sweet voice. While Seth gets out of the basement, a suspicious Nate follows him and discovers Holly. However, she deliberately distracts Nate so that Seth, who has returned with food, has time to overpower him. At Holly's manipulation and much urging, Seth smashes Nate's skull with a cinder block. The poor security guard falls dead on the floor. Holly then creepily laughs, telling Seth that now she has made him just like her, a murderer. Seth starts freaking out, having realized what he has done under her influence. Holly then instructs him on how to dump a dead body. She tells him to remove the teeth first, as this way the body cannot be identified, and tells him to cut it into small pieces and feed them to the dogs in the center. Seth follows her instructions and burns the rest of the body. He also removes his fingerprints from everywhere. However, the disappearance of his co-worker doesn't go unnoticed by the police. The cops start their investigation by interrogating everyone at the workplace. 
As they question Seth, they get suspicious of him. They even put him as a suspect after how Seth responded to their questions. In the meantime, Seth is convinced that he and Holly can forge a relationship based on mutual love. To prove his love for her, he even cuts off his own finger. Holly then grabs Seth's knife and threatens to kill herself if he doesn't open her cage. Left with no choice, he frees her. The manipulative woman then tells Seth that she believes he loves her and that she loves him back. The two of them kiss before Holly cuts Seth's throat. After this, she manages to escape from the basement. Months pass, and we see Holly is finally back together with Eric. Apparently, her fictional events from her journal are being published by Vanity Press. However, Holly finds evidence that Eric has been cheating again. But this time, she doesn't want to do anything about it. Instead, she travels to an abandoned warehouse where we see that Seth has been kept in a cage, still alive but horribly mutilated and tortured. He is also mute from his throat injury. Holly thanks him for saving her by allowing her to take out all of her murderous impulses on him instead.